With Bruce Luxury Travel, the world is at your feet. Well, welcome everybody. Today we're going to be talking to Tony Pace. Tony is an entertainer that I've known for a number of years and he does an extraordinary job with everything from impressions to singing and just unbelievable shows. Everybody that's seen him has said the same thing. Tony has been on expedition cruises a oh, couple of years now, and he's on an expedition cruise right now on Seabourn Quest. Welcome to the show, Tony. How are you doing today? Thank you, Bruce. I appreciate that. Um, I'm doing great. We're, um, I'm on the um, Seabourn Quest, headed down to Antarctica. Um, we boarded on uh, in Buenos Aires, uh, which is a great, incredible port. Uh, to 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 be from or to to sail from. Absolutely. Um, those of you who are looking for something to do in in that region, Buenos Aires is also a great destination point as well. Mm -hmm. um, but we joined um, a few days ago on the Seabourn, headed down to Antarctica, as I said, and uh, this is truly one of the great expedition. Um, destinations that everyone in my my humble opinion everyone should do at some point in their lives absolutely and the the ship you're on you've been on in all kinds of ships um, doing all types of entertainment over the last few years how is this ship the quest different than the other ships that you've been on well the quest is a smaller uh, smaller ship basically it has a pay passenger capacity of uh, about 400 plus about 400 people um, and plus the uh, the crew of course so you have 400 passengers as opposed to some of the larger ships that that have 2,000 you know 3,000 on up um, it it lends itself for a more intimate uh, intimate uh, uh, you know uh, just experience as far as that's concerned but they also bring on here uh, a, one of the most incredible expedition teams of, of about 12, 12 people that are experts. Um, they will forget more than I will ever remember, mm -hmm. each one of them. It's just absolutely amazing. Some of them uh, were stationed in Antarctica for one specifically. Uh, Paul was there for 26 years. Oh, my word. So their knowledge is just amazing, uh, first off. And the ship um, adds a level of ex amazing luxury. Uh, so you're doing an expedition, uh, you're doing an expedition cruise in luxury. Uh, and it's it's amazing concept as far as that's concerned. The, uh, the suites are amazing. I, I mean, all of it, the experience is top-notch and um, I recommend this uh, above all absolutely and you know the thing is expedition ships are different than the regular ships because on this on these ships are the seaborne and a lot of the other ships that are mating made uh, especially for this type of travel have things like powered submarines and with Seabourn, these ships have sub uh, submarines that are leather upholstery, air conditioned in the, <laughs> in the bad climates, stereo systems, champagne service, etc. It's just unbelievable. I remember years ago, well, and, and, and I. As a matter, yeah. No, as a matter of fact, the uh, the Seabourn has uh, taken the expedition aspect to the next level and they are i believe if if i'm correct they're building another two ships mm -hmm. that are i think they are smaller mm -hmm. um and they they are specifically for expedition uh and they will have submarines absolutely um, that will be part of the expedition aspect uh i think that's the next up and coming thing absolutely and the the other thing is is there a lot of these smaller uh, expedition ships have some of them have helicopters and heliports. It's just amazing. 
where in Antarctica you might be able to go inland or on the ice, well it is land underneath the ice, um, closer to the South Pole. And of course this is an extra, you don't get this just by cruising, it's a, an extra charge, but it's a once in a lifetime experience. You're going somewhere where the original explorers went and they lost their lives, some of them, doing what you're doing on this cruise. I, I saw pictures from the last cruise. Um, what, what did you do for expedition types of things during your cruise? Well, well we, uh, there's kayaking. Um, that is just one of the most amazing experiences. We had, um, I had a whale uh, underneath me in this crystal blue water. I mean, it was just some, I, I mean, I, I will never have any type of experience like that no. again. Um, and then um, they did a polar plunge uh, on the back end of the ship. There's a, um, there's a, a door that uh, folds, comes down, gotcha. and they tie a rope, and they do a polar plunge. You jump in, oh my and God. they give you an amazing certificate. Yeah, I mean, it's just, <laughs> you know, there are people that, um, I think I, I, I did not do it, because I know one thing for certain, I would have died. I'm just not not in condition to uh, for my body to, to go from, exactly. you know, from 70 or 98.5 to to uh, 22 oh, point, yeah. point nothing and right. it's just not going to be there right. um right. but one of the one of the things that i truly enjoy most of all is first of all i can say that i've set foot on all seven continents right. um there are truly uh, and they did the the numbers there are only 10,000 per year uh i think the they the numbers are 10,000 people per year visit Antarctica. And when you when you run that thought process wow. uh, of the entire world population and 10,000, I'm humbled at the fact that I'm one of the mm. people, one of a very minute percentages of population around the world that, that has had the chance to set foot, not once, but usually uh, in the past couple of times that I've done this, mm-hmm. uh, it's six or seven times honestly and in in different uh different places and different areas and and they choose incredible incredible areas that that are so populated one of the areas had had about 400 500,000 uh penguins and seals and and you're seeing a, 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 an area of wildlife that is just uh, it's it's dumb it's dumbfounding to 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 seriously just sit there and go wow this is i'm somewhere that that uh, uh i would have never thought years ago i would have ever been able to do yes really five years ago i went down on crystal and that's right. not an expedition the, the ship i was on was uh the serenity it's it's not a right uh, not an expedition ship, but they are also right. coming out with expedition ships specifically for expedition cruising and smaller ports. Right. So they're, in the Galapagos, they're going to be able to go into the Galapagos. The same as Seabourne and there's a bunch of others. Uh, right. It's an amazing thing. The guests, where do you find the guests in range uh, of age that are on the ship? You know, the guests are getting uh, quite a bit younger, uh, Mm -hmm. or am I getting quite a bit older? I'm I'm not sure, but (laughs) the guests are, uh, my perception is being skewed. Um, The guests are are definitely uh, a wider range. I've noticed, uh, now I've done this uh, on Seabourn. This is my third trip down to Antarctica. Mm -hmm. And I would say we've had uh, uh, 30s, People in their thirties on up to, to uh, again the 90, mm-hmm. 90 year olds. Um, so it's not uh, simply a, um, a an older, right. you know, seventy seventy and up. Uh, this is a trip that 
that people are doing in, in their 30s. They're um, and they're enjoying it. They're bringing some of them have brought some uh, uh, teenage children mm, I will. Um, to, uh, to you know to to visit and to see to experience. Right. Um, I would say the median age uh, though is probably in uh, mid 40s. So 40 to, to 65, I would think, if if my eyes, you know, uh, are correct, are, are is the median age for uh, for this cruise. Exactly. As a matter of fact, Chris uh, Austin, senior vice president of global marketing and sales, says that the significant, and I'm quoting this, a significant percentage of seaborne guests are baby boomers, and right. with a growing contingent of Generation Xers. So you're you're right, right on. Um, this is not an inexpensive inexpensive cruise. In, in other words, people that are used to going to the Caribbean for five hundred dollars or a thousand dollars. Right. This is not a thousand dollar cruise. No. Uh, this is several no, you're, thousand. You're, yeah, I mean, uh, and and it's worth every penny because first of all. If you if you really do the math, uh, a lot of these other cruises, you you pay you pay your base rate for for your cabin, and then if you want um, to eat a specialty dining, uh, okay, yeah. a, you know, a step above as far as food is concerned, you're paying twenty dollars per person or whatever. Uh, you're paying a, an additional fee. Right. So, you know, what as far as I'm concerned, what the uh, the dining in that that uh, those specialty dining on those those ships is your typical every single day dining here right. on Seaborn. Um, the other thing is on Seaborn, there is you don't have to pull out your your card mm -hmm. to buy anything. Basically, I mean alcohol is uh, is part of the package, right. and the bartenders. Uh, the the waiters they they know you by name, mm -hmm. um, and by the time you're into your second day, they already know uh, what you want to drink. You right. walk into the you walk into the club or the lounge, and they're they're you know they're meeting you at the at the corner of the bar, saying, "Mr. Pates, would you like your your usual?" And and they've got uh, um, you know whatever it is that that you drink. Uh, that is just an amazing level. Um, so when you add all of these uh, these small fees that you think of, it really does add up, um, and you get closer to what is normal. But um, I, I think you're probably looking at uh, certain cruises. You know, for the expedition here, I think what I don't even know what the book rate is. You, you, what are you at? Fourteen, fifteen thousand for um, per person for you know for a suite or for right. you know your normal room, and right. all of the rooms are suites anyway, so you can't go wrong there. Right. Um, but I'll tell you, I would spend. I would if you know if I can. Uh, this is this is where I would be as far as these expeditions are concerned because. Um, on some of the larger ships, you can't go ashore. You, yeah, you can still, you can still see the area, but you can't have, you can't be in front of, in front of penguins and seals. You can't have one at your feet. Um, you can't get into areas that that these ships can. Absolutely, yeah. and you know, with dining, the uh, luxury dining, the Ruth Chris on at sea, really. Uh, there's no up charges, premium wines and spirits, open right. bars, specialty right. coffees, all that stuff's included. And tipping's not yeah. expected. I mean, so no. uh, adding on things like um, flights in and all the rest of that, sometimes that's yeah. included also. So, I mean, you've got to take right. in, into consideration all the things that are included with this particular expedition cruise and all the expedition cruises are starting to go that way uh the right. there's a huge number of people 
that are tired of being nickeled and dimed to get uh by the time they get off the cruise and they add everything up you're absolutely right they're spending a yep. little bit more uh, it might be just a little bit less but at the same time you're getting so much more on on a seaborne cruise uh you're getting so so much um in the way of amenities but you're also getting a staff that is just amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, so attentive. They take care of your needs. The captain, he is just, you know, he said many times, look, if, if you have a problem, I want to know about it now so mm -hmm. I can fix it. Don't absolutely. wait until you get off the ship and complain about it. And he's absolutely, I mean, this, they take this to heart. If there is no one um, that, you know, they want to know, and and it's a wonderful way of doing business Absolutely. because they put their clients, their customers, they put their passengers first. Absolutely. And this is from somebody to all of you out there that are in, interested in looking at expedition cruising. This is not somebody that's been a casual cruiser. Been on many, many cruises like myself. Uh, and realizes the, the benefits of spending a little bit more and having that experience, that bucket list experience. Like Tony said, you know, 10,000, that's a, that's a drop in the ocean. And uh, Tony, uh, you, you sent over a photo one time of the last cruise at the Drake Passage it was so rough when I was there that they didn't they didn't proceed into the the passage, and you said it right. was so calm, and I said, "Oh my word, that must have been something." <laughs> uh, to yeah, have it so we're calm. Uh, we're just above the Falklands. We're just above the Falklands Island. We're hitting hitting the Falklands mm -hmm. uh, tomorrow, I believe, um, and uh, basically. You know, the, the one thing that I've noticed, and I've probably hit any, as far as rough seas, um, I, I've probably hit it once in uh, in all the times that I've come down here. And um, But it seems like, I, I don't know if it's the luck of, of the captain or, what it, or whether they're watching the radars and mm -hmm. they're circumventing, but whatever they're doing, they're doing it right. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, um, and I, you know, and I personally thank them for it because the last thing you want to do is uh, um, go, go in there, you know, feeling queasy. Oh yeah, and they actually turned around and said, you know, you've gotten as close as we can get to the passage and to that point where the Atlantic and the Pacific meet. The Pacific's a little higher in elevation right. than the Atlantic, and that's right. what makes that tumultuous sees there at a lot many many times because yep. that's the reason why the Panama Canal has canals right otherwise exactly. that would just rush through there that water rush through and and uh, erode away Central America and uh, yep. so absolutely I've really enjoyed talking to you Tony and we're gonna have to talk again about some of the other things that you're doing and some of the other expeditions you're doing, and maybe after you come off of this, uh, do some retrospect on um, this particular trip. Appreciate you coming on board today. Bruce, well, I, I appreciate it. And, and you know, you're, you're doing an incredible service of letting people know what's happening, what's out there, um, and the true um, relevance uh, to their lives as far as how it works with their lives. Uh, not a lot of people are doing that. Uh, they're just trying to sell uh, something. They're trying to sell a package, but you're mm -hmm. you're giving a service, and uh, I thank I personally thank you for doing it. Thank you. Well, tune into the next program. We're going to talk to uh, other people that are involved with expedition cruising as well as river cruising and sports packages. Uh, tune in to luxury and travel advisor podcast.com you'll see everything there plus 30 or 40 other platforms that i'm on so come back soon with bruce luxury travel the world is at your door